Open design. Bitcoin design. Bitcoin design. I am here, cozy, having a fireplace moment. I feel with open design, it's a new emerging area. And so to me, explaining it is sort of this idea sort of, of, this idea we, of are we are trying to figure it out. It involves folks, folks from different disciplines coming together, coming together with, a common goal. with a common goal. In our case, In our we, case want we want to make Bitcoin more usable for people. So the main challenge, so the main challenge with today, Bitcoin today, I think, is still the user experience. Well, we need to change this narrative. And to change this narrative, and to change this narrative, and to change this narrative means, means that we are designing Bitcoin for everyone. We must design Bitcoin for everyone. What is designing What is designing everyone? Me, everyone, to me, it means that you are designing for that software engineer that works in Silicon Valley, as well as that 10, 11 year old living in rural Nigeria, whose ideas about money are not quite formed yet. It is an opportunity to change the way the world works. Money connects us all but we live in a world of contrasting realities. In the last few years, it's become pretty obvious that uh, it's time for Bitcoin to sort of transcend the cypherpunk's basement and break out into the world and actually help the people that it was designed originally to help. It includes people from different backgrounds, lifestyles, maybe opinions I don't agree with or things I hadn't considered, regions in the world, uh, languages I haven't spoken, possibly age groups who haven't been considered, people who aren't even alive yet. I think, uh, my favorite part about the Bitcoin design community is that I get to make new friends from all around the world and do that while contributing to a technology that's going to fundamentally change the world. Um, I've always been attracted to like design on the border of technology uh, because new like UI challenges and UX uh, patterns emerge. Uh, we're going to need to get more designers in the space. We're going to need to get more developers in the space. Um, but really the first stage of that process is opening the, opening the whole thing up to everybody. Yeah. So, um, that was, uh, some of the beautiful people in the Bitcoin design community. And, um, you know, one thing that they obviously have in common, they're all really passionate about this thing called Bitcoin. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, first off, uh, let's uh, like try to figure out what this Bitcoin thing is. And some people refer to it as magic internet money. And, um, you know, in 2008, it did have like a bit of like a mythical beginnings because some anonymous person or persons um, uh, published this white paper that laid out the architecture for this peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And this was a problem that, um, uh, uh, like many people, uh, uh, tried to address in the past before for, for decades, actually. It's a very tricky problem. And for the first time um, this was done, you know, the foundations of a global payment network um, that anyone can join, you know, once they have a computing device. And um, in 2009, a few months later, uh, the first version of the software that implemented this um, architecture was released. And, you know, it went from theory to reality. And, um, you know, uh, 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 one person downloaded it and then someone else uh, did. And, and they're all kind of starting to get connected to one another. But the software was very, like, developer focused at this time, right? Um, it required, like, you know, like some expert knowledge, some very technical knowledge. Um, but still, you know, um, the network kept growing. And here we are in 2021 um, uh, talking about this at Figma. Um, uh, uh, you know, the popularity of Bitcoin has, you know, just exploded. Uh, but I want to take a step back a little bit and talk about, like, what problem Bitcoin is trying to solve now. And there's all 4 billion people in the world who still don't have access to proper banking systems. And um, uh, a new digital economy is also blossoming. And for me, this is where Bitcoin really shines. And as Bitcoin's popularity continues to, you know, uh, uh, grow, it's essential that ev everyone's able to participate in this new economy, regardless of their technical expertise or geography. Because people have a real need for it, because, you know, it's breaking down these borders and, um, and, and, and barriers, you know. So what's the design challenge? Why are we talking about this in a design conference now? Well, um, uh, Bitcoin is still quite technical. 
you know, um, is overly technical. And there's some design debt that we've gotten um, over the past years. And that needs to be improved um, for, you know, mass adoption that we're kind of like uh, 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 on the trajectory of getting. So as designers, how do we solve this then, right? Um, well, we look to user-centered design. And um, uh, uh, with this, uh, we try to, you know, address like these global challenges, right? Now in Bitcoin, open access is fundamental to its philosophy and its core, um, like one of the core values is decentralization. And that's all about like open access again. So when we talk about designing for everyone, this is a massive undertaking. And um, Bitcoin has one of the largest potential user groups a project can have, right? Because everyone uses money. And we have to ask the question, who is everyone? When we look at it um, too abstract, you know, like this term, like everyone, um, we, like, we can start losing some details and some people can get left behind. So we can't just talk about it in a vague sense. And um, we have to like try to understand the needs and wants of the individuals that we're actually designing for. Now, here's the thing. Not one person um, is able to design uh, uh, for everyone, for any kind of product, right? Um, uh, 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 we also can't design a global money system by staying in a bubble. People have different relationships towards money and um, a different understanding of how money works, right? And even culture plays a factor in that. Um, so we have to start thinking about like how does the int like the interfaces adapt, um, you know, cross cultures and regions and geographies and languages and all this, right? So uh, when we start designing for everyone, we're actually, you know, starting to design for like these individuals. So where are we now? You know, we have this technology. Um, now we have to like start looking at the people and figure out how um, we can um, uh, uh, provide them access to these tools and systems that we're, we're building. We don't want to have like gatekeepers, right? So there's lots of like open questions here. Um, and but how do we move forward? Right, so we have to expose ourselves to different perspectives, and when we, you know, join with other people and add more people to the design process, we can get those other perspectives that can help us design more inclusive um, experiences and more accessible experiences. So, well, first off, we understand we can't do it alone, so it's good to like talk to our peers um, in like different places. And um, about nine months ago, um, when you would look out in the ecosystem, it was filled with very clever, like technical folks, economists, cryptographers, open source developers. But for designers, it was quite lonely. And this is a big challenge that we're trying to uh, uh, do it, uh, address. We can't do it alone. And it, it was difficult to find other people, but we knew that they existed because like things were getting worked on, things were getting built, right? Things were getting designed. Um, but there's this siloed knowledge. Everyone's kind of like working in their own um, compartments and stuff, and people aren't really like talking very much together. Um, so collectively at this time, you know, nine months ago, everyone's kind of thinking that, you know, we should be gathering and all that. Um, and uh, 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 we did start to do that. We started to do that. There was a spark and it started to happen. Um, yeah, so everyone was thinking about like, what could this community look like? And we started to get like really serious about it. You know, we can actually create a space for designers to meet and talk and help each other get comfortable um, uh, 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 with the technology and learning about um, and learning about it, right? Now, uh, so as with any, com um, as with any community, we start off with a Slack, you know, all communities are in Slacks right now. And um, you can check out bitcoindesigners.org um, to join in. And, you know, it really started with like tens of people and, um, you know, just as a friendly space to just like uh, uh, chat, you know, about uh, 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 these design problems and what the community could be, um, how we can make design as part of the conversation and what problems that we're actually trying to solve. Now there's over 1,000 people. And I want you to remember a theme, which is um, starting small and growing organically, right? Um, so, you know, whilst all this conversation is happening, we're like, okay, we need to record some of these decisions because not everyone's gonna 
you know, be part of this community forever, right? Um, hopefully they are, but you know, people drop off, they don't have all the time to dedicate, right? So it's good to have these things recorded. And we knew we wanted to have a website as well. So we created a GitHub and um, hosted some of the, um, uh, 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 the website files and the um, documents um, in two repositories. And um, uh, this is our website, bitcoin.design. Um, and the website kind of runs like an open source project as well, because anyone can contribute content. If you see something wrong with, a, um, with something on the page, you can scroll down. There's a edit this page button. And you know you can submit your own headers even. And you know having face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, chats and stuff like that is quite, like face-to-face -face time is quite important for us. Um, as a community, you know, um, we have uh, this kind of like um, Slack, uh, uh, sorry, this Jitsi that's running 24 hours and anyone can jump in and we have like, often have like these impromptu uh, calls uh, just to help one another. But we also have some more structured calls um, like our um, community call, which just happened like about an hour ago. And um, on those calls, we talk about like the big plans, you know, like, uh, uh, what are our plans for the year, what's the progress, and whatever else. We also have a uh, design review. Um, so this is a call that um, Connor um, uh, uh, hosts, and he wanted to allow, create a platform for designers to be able to uh, showcase their work and get feedback from others, right? Because again, we're trying to like share and collaborate with one another here, right? And one interesting thing happened was not only were designers showing off their work, but projects started to come in and um, present because they have like a bunch of designers who are passionate about this Bitcoin thing um, uh, uh, for free commenting on their uh, designs. So it was great. It was a symbiotic relationship, you know? We also have these design sprints. So Pavlin X and myself, we did these design sprints, uh, Bitcoin accepted here. And that's basically, um, with Bitcoin, you can be your own bank. Um, so that means you also need to, you know, set up your own payment processor. But thankfully, there's some really great software like BTC Pay Server, which you can, you know, um, run up and your website can start accepting Bitcoin on it because, you know, invoices and whatnot have to get created at shop like at a checkout and whatnot, right? And, you know, we have all these conversations, we have all these things happening on the website, all different updates, community calls and all that. Um, the Slack is going crazy. Um, it's uh, for, you know, more casual participants, it started becoming like a bit difficult to keep up to date with everything. So we decided to do a newsletter and look for like other mediums to, um, uh, share what's, what was happening. So we started recording um, the calls and putting them on YouTube, for instance. Um, we have a Twitter now, and actually um, the Twitter is managed um, in the Slack publicly. So if you want to post something, you uh, uh, go into the Slack Twitter channel and you know we discuss it and we try to come to consensus. And some of these processes, you know, it like you might start asking like, how is this all organized, right? Um, this Twitter thing that anyone can like post to and stuff, it's, it, it might sound like a bit mad, right? Because it's all public, right? We have everything public. So Christoph now is going to talk to you a bit about you know the method in this madness here. So um, I'll hand it over to him now. OK, thanks, John. Uh, OK, let's talk about open design. So as we started with this community back at the beginning, we as John uh, talked about, we had a lot of big goals and big ambitions and we're not really clear you know, what we can do, how we should organize ourselves, uh, who makes decisions, what do we work on, and all of this type of stuff. And we, were, we kind of had a, a, a phase where we tried to find ourselves. And uh, some of us had an open source uh, background and open source has been around for decades. And you know, they've refined their processes really well, but it's really kind of focused on development and coding. And it, uh, we realized it doesn't perfectly apply. A lot of things are pretty uh, interesting and relevant for us, but designers also work differently. They create different things. Their collaboration happens very differently. And um, so we came across this term open design, and that's not necessarily a term. It's not a term that we came up with. We came across it and we started embracing it because we do think that it is great if there is a term that kind of captures all of these uh, public collaboration ideas 
and where we all know uh, when we use it that this is what it stands for and this is uh, what it means. So let's start with the word uh, with the word open. And that starts by when you think about your design work that you do not start by thinking, I'm going to create something and I will have a polished artifact and I will share that and that will be it. And that artifact, people will like it on Dribble and that's the end of it. It starts at the very beginning where, where your assumption about your work is that it will be it will be public from the beginning, that your process will be public from the beginning, that other people will have the ability to see it and to remix it and uh, contribute to it and then have every right to do that. And that you're kind of, that it grows beyond you in a little bit. And if you, if you kind of internalize that and if you think about your work that way, uh, you create different things and you just approach things very differently. There's also a lot of effort kind of involved uh, in not just doing the work, but also making it publicly available. Uh, so other people can understand it uh, very easily what you're trying to do and then react to it in a way that's um, that pushes it forward. The second part of it uh, is that there are there are no barriers at that point. It becomes kind of permissionlessness when things are in this public space. Um, you put something on the internet and that doesn't mean that anybody will even look at it or see it. That means it's public. Uh, but if you share it with the right people, then you're going to get some really good responses. And then they will not, they will not have to ask for your permission. The design information is freely available. Um, they can simply just show up and comment on it and talk about it. And uh, out of that, some really interesting uh, dynamics uh, appear. And uh, the biggest thing is that the sense of ownership is completely different. So what's mine is now yours and is also ours. And kind of one of the most extreme cases, which you've already heard about with Bitcoin, but we've also experienced in the Bitcoin design community, is where anonymous contributors have shared designs. So somebody shows up, uh, creates an account, stays completely anonymous, we don't know their name, and they share maybe a complete uh, complete high fidelity user experience flow for a very particular Bitcoin uh, activity. And um, so they wanna make the file available and share it, make it public and put it in the community that belongs to everyone all of a sudden. And uh, you know we, we've, we've done that. And that is one of the most extreme uh, examples. And uh, you know you don't only get designers in this too. Uh, when you, let's say you have an interesting project, somebody who wants to contribute translations will show up, somebody who wants to work on accessibility, all kinds of people show up. And uh, this sounds like total chaos, and in a way it a little bit is, uh, but there are uh, some methods in here that, that allow for things to flourish. And the, the big, idea and that is a very difficult idea with a lot of nuance that's not very hard to describe in a short presentation in a single slide uh, is the idea of consensus finding so when things belong to everyone the way that you move forward is through many many small interactions and uh, so you discuss and you debate and you push and you propose and some things get rejected and people have your arguments and, and build on each other's ideas. And out of that, over time, through many small interactions, uh, a project uh, gets shaped. So it's the idea of these small things coming together and building up uh, over time. And you know, as we've seen, it can lead to things uh, growing from an eight or nine page PDF on a niche mailing list to something that's an estimated 100 million people uh, use around the world in very, very meaningful ways where you know it goes beyond photo sharing or other applications that people actually store their money in there and send money around the world which is incredibly meaningful uh, to our lives and uh, another example uh, of this is um, the evolution of the visual language of bitcoin because there's no design team there's no agency uh, it's really just individuals contributing and certain things being adopted so the logo of bitcoin or the symbol of bitcoin it started in 2009 uh, with what you see on the left, uh, which was created by the original creator, uh, individual or group, I just don't know, of Bitcoin, uh, just a little BC in this golden coin. And I'm sure you've seen all kinds of variations of this golden coin idea, it's a little bit video gamey. Then uh, an update by the same individual or group of people uh, used the Thai bot symbol. So they adopted a different currency symbol and merged it with this original golden coin idea. 
And then nine months later or so, um, a different person, we also don't know who they are, they showed up in the Bitcoin talk forum and just posted this and said, hey, I have an idea. I have a new design here. Feel free to use it any way you want. And it was this uh, Bitcoin symbol that we kind of know today with this orange and this 14 degree tilt. And they posted it. I think they had a little bit of marketing materials, few buttons and stickers in addition to this logo. And somehow the uh, internet hive mind decided this is what we're going to use. Uh, no design process. It was simply adopted and people ran with it. And, uh, you know, this photo is here from a small village in El Salvador called uh, Bitcoin Beach. And you can now buy your eggs there and people recognize this uh, Bitcoin symbol. So it's pretty, pretty interesting uh, design evolution here. And it doesn't stop there because uh, the Bitcoin also has a subunit, which is called the Satoshi. So 100 million Satoshi make up one Bitcoin. And um, does that Satoshi need a dedicated symbol? Some people think so, some designers think so, and they've created uh, some of these concepts that you see here on the screen. Um, they all have different rationale for why this design is the appropriate one and why they should be used. And they've put them out there, they're in their open space. Some people put them on Twitter. Some people create dedicated landing pages for it or either custom fonts that you know include that symbol already. And we don't know who it's, uh, which one's going to be or if there will be one. It's going to be really interesting to find out. And if this interests you, uh, you know, you can also post your design. It's going to be just as valid as everyone else's. And maybe the internet hive mind decides that this is going to be it. Um, so as you as I just talked about, a lot of this starts with individual ambition. Um, and we see this in the design community a lot where somebody joins the Slack and says, hey, I'm so-and-so. Here's why I care about Bitcoin or here's what I like doing in design. So we have Alexa. Uh, joined with an art project she wanted to do, which was all about getting people to share their what Bitcoin means to them. We had Connor who did a uh, series uh, where he interviewed Bitcoin uh, designers working in the Bitcoin space. Somebody created um, created uh, VR spaces that incorporate Bitcoin, and all kinds of different backgrounds. And they bring those in, and you know some projects continue and flourish, some some projects change. And it takes in all kinds of different uh, shapes, just whatever the group decides to do. So those are kind of uh, projects that start on an individual level. And then we also have a community project. This is an example here. And this ad addresses one of the earlier points where um, that John's mentioned where there were a lot of individual Bitcoin designers and they had no real resources out there. It was just very hard to know how to design Bitcoin applications well. So we're trying to create these human interface guidelines that provide a lot of useful information and maybe best practices, but don't tell anyone exactly how their design uh, should be because there will it will probably require many, many very different localized uh, experiences. But this is something we're working on. Dozens of people have contributed to it. It's a continuous work in progress. Feel free to check it out. Uh, let us know what you think. Now, in addition to this information, we're also trying to create resources because you know, you open a Figma file, it's blank, right? Uh, and a lot of designers uh, realized that work in this space, they're like, okay, I need these icons. I need these, uh, I need these uh, UI elements. So we created a Bitcoin icon set. You can see that bitcoinicons.com. We're working on a wallet UI kit. Those are all uh, public uh, Figma community files. And anyone's free to duplicate and they use you know, in the hope to jumpstart prototypes, design exploration, and also uh, real projects. Um, but you know, it wouldn't. We wouldn't have. We wouldn't succeed if we didn't make Bitcoin actually useful for real people. So we're also uh, looking to support open source projects in many different ways. Some of them are very small teams, don't, might not even have a designer. SUS is uh, an example of one project where we're working on uh, on a rebranding, on the website, on the design system, and all kinds of details. So I'm very excited about this one. Spectre is another one that we're working with. It's a more advanced application. And that one has some really, really complex uh, UX problems that we're, we're working through. Um, also a really good one. Okay. so. We talked a lot about open design and all kinds of different projects. And uh, if, you, if this is something that interests you, whether it's Bitcoin or not, or something else, and you want to dive into open design, open source, um, just take it really slow. One of the things a lot of people do is they jump in too quickly and try to do too much. 
and then the energy dissipates. So just take it slow, walk around, find something that interests you, uh, ask some questions, introduce yourself, have conversations, um, and just kind of take it slowly until something resonates with you. And if you want to contribute, and you know, this doesn't require overly technical knowledge of every detail of a project either. Reviewing is one of the most helpful things uh, that you can do in open design and open source. It gives the people that are uh, already producing things a very, very helpful feedback to ensure that what they're working on is actually appreciated by the wider community. So uh, very important thing, a lot of times heavily underestimated. And uh, this label here, you might be available uh, wear it if you know GitHub issues. GitHub issues is how we uh, we manage our tasks. Uh, a lot of open source projects, uh, and we also do that a bit in the open design community. And this is a label that's applied to activities that are good for uh, first time contributors. So if you want to, if you're looking for something to do, you say, okay, I, I'm antsy. I want to do something. Uh, look for this thing. And uh, it usually describes a task that's easy to uh, kind of accomplish and get something done and go through this whole process of review and consensus building and then merging it into the bigger project and that, that becoming something that's owned by uh, the public. So if you do this uh, for a little bit, now you might realize, uh, well, am I part of the project now or not? And that is, uh, there's some ambiguity in this because it's not really clear. There's no label that you get. Uh, you, know, you don't get you know, a certificate that, okay, you're a project member. Uh, the biggest thing that you might notice is then that uh, people will ask for your opinion. They're like, okay, this person has shown, has helped out in different ways. They have shown some expertise. And then they will reach out to you and say, hey, what do you think of this? Or, hey, would you mind helping here? So, um, but definitely some ambiguity here. It's not like other projects you might be familiar with. Um, also something that takes that took me a little bit uh, to get used to, for sure. And you know, if you're super ambitious, start your own project, share an idea, find people to collaborate with, uh, do your thing. Also, there's nobody to stop you from doing that. And you know, if you don't like your bank account, uh, your banking app, or your banking website, you know, well, nothing you can do, right? Uh, it's uh, you can't change it. You have to deal with it. But you know, if you want to create your own Bitcoin application, it's a completely open protocol. So uh, you can change anything you want. Uh, you can build your design your own application, find a friend to build an app. Uh, it's a completely open design space uh, with some really interesting problems that you might not be familiar with from, uh, let's say, the internet that we know so far. Um, so I am super excited about this, uh, what uh, Bitcoin allows us to do in this space. It allows us to uh, explore. But, you know, Bitcoin is 12 years old. This community is nine months old. Um, we have a lot to do. We have a lot of maturing to do. The ideas of open design are still kind of unrefined. There's so many ideas floating around. Uh, we just hope that we can get uh, better day by day and make a big difference for all those uh, people out there. And uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. You know, you could be watching uh, Pac-Man speedruns on Twitch right now, but you're here. And we really appreciate that. Thanks for the Bitcoin design community members who helped put this presentation together. I hope we managed to represent these ideas well. And also thanks to Pablo Stanley for his open peeps illustration that I used throughout this presentation, a good uh, example of open uh, design. And if you want to get in contact with us, uh, Bitcoin design is the place to go. So swing by. And now I'll hand it back to Jenny and Raji. Please take it away.